Okie dokie. So today we're making a bread cloche. Cloches are pretty old form. You can find them in the um, Roman times. They would bury cloches in their campfires to roast food. Um, you can find these forms in North Africa. Um, they call them tagines. I think Jen made a um, video on that. The cloche that we're making here is one for bread. The lid will be uh, stouter than a tagine would be. And it will also not have a hole for the steam because we want to hold the steam in for baking bread. Um, the inside will not be glazed, which means I'm going to fire this to cone 10 so that that clay is nice and vitrified. Um, Traditionally, the, you can think of the bottom as a baking stone and with an upper domed lid. That's essentially what it is. And um, the reason that we people like to bake in these is because cloches get hotter on the inside because they hold in the steam than the surrounding oven. So the internal temperature of your cloche would be pretty regular and the outside of the cloche with the oven being variable near the door, away from the door, um, you know, you can have hot and cold spots. And that can change the way your bread cooks. Um, we're hoping for a nice, good, chewy crust and soft center when we bake our bread. So for this form, um, we're gonna flatten this out pretty far down, um, flat to the bat. I want to pull it out pretty wide and then I'm going to raise the wall and put a flange in the lip of this. So that means that you need to keep your uh, lip a little bit thicker than you normally might so you can push that flange in for the domed lid on the top. The other thing is I am not going to trim the bottom of this, I'm going to keep it flat um, but I am going to throw it to where the bottom is pretty thick. It's a prob at least a quarter of an inch, if not just a little bit more, because I'm going to push some texture into it and I um, want that bottom to be thick for that purpose. In case you're new to flanges, you can use your finger, a wooden knife tool um, with a 90 degree angle, many different things to accomplish that. You're just pushing to the, um, if you were to chop that middle um, and rim in half, you would be pushing on the inside of that middle. So you're making a little shelf there. Um, we're going to rib off all the water and I'm going to take my wooden knife tool and um, get rid of that little skirt that you see there that's uh, where the pot meets the bat and then we'll undercut everything. I recommend taking your splash pans off to undercut so that you can get your hands at least level with your wheel head um, if not underneath it so that you don't cut through the floor. Okay, so I'm gonna measure the interior of my flange and that's for the flange that is gonna go in the lid. Um, we're gonna take, this is about five and a half pounds of clay and I'm opening up a bowl shape. Um, the flange in the lid will sit inside of the flange in the bottom of the cloche. Um, and so this video is sped up. Make sure that you go um, at a moderate pace with your wheel and nice and slow with your hands. Um, when I'm pulling up bowls, I'm looking at the interior to be a nice curve and um, the exterior comes up fairly straight until I'm ready to shape it at the very end. You also want to make sure that that rim of your um, bowl shape that you're throwing here fits inside of that measurement of your um, calipers, otherwise it will be too big if you go too wide. If it's too small, you can probably push it out, no problem, but um, just try to, until you get the height you want, try to keep it inside of that measurement.
So I rechecked the measurements on the bottom of the cloche where I pushed on the interior of the bottom to form that flange. I'm pushing on the exterior of the rim of the top of the cloche to form a flange that will sit down into the bottom. Um, so the teeth of my calipers will rest on the outside of the lid. Um, I'm getting all the slurry and water off of the inside and pushing it out just a little bit to make that measurement match those teeth. And then we're gonna really work at refining this lip here. So you can see I'm pushing down with my index finger and then I come through with a chamois and just refine everything up. Um, lastly, I will take my wooden knife tool and cut the skirt off the bottom when I get everything tweaked and where I think it will fit. Um, one last compression with a rib to avoid cracking. And then we will cut this off the bat and come back for trimming after it's set up to leather hard. Okay, so this has been setting up um, for a while and I did leave this on the bat to set up after I undercut it just because it's hard to move flat wide things without warping or distorting them. So I'm trimming up the side here and then I'm gonna just take my rib and compress the bottom part. Um, those lines that you see are from a kink in my cut wire. Um, that's really all I'm going to do to the bottom of this cloche um, and then I'm going to flip it over once uh, everything is sort of set up and I finish trimming the top and put some um, push some texture into it with the theory that it will help circulation underneath the bottom of the bread. It's a theory. Um, we'll find out if it works or not. <laughs> Okay, now for the lid. You're gonna center that puppy upside down and lock it down with some worms and then we're gonna trim this guy round. Um, I am intending on throwing a knob on this, so just try not to trim it too round, or excuse me, too thin rather. Um, and then also when you go to throw your knob, make sure that your lid is not wet it's leather hard. Um, if it's wet and the, you're throwing a knob on top, the pressure will cause it to start to collapse, um, which did happen to me. Um, I was able to kind of work through it, but just save yourself the frustration and um, wait for that clay to be at the right stage. Okay, so I'm scoring so that I can stick that clay on. I'm going to make a little cone shape here that's sort of wide at the bottom and comes to an arrow point at the top to make centering it easier. And my clay is really soft. Um, a lot of water and a fairly quick, quick wheel speed um, will help you recenter this. And you're just using your fingers instead of the heels of your hands to move this clay up. Um, and then I'm gonna shape it. So where you want a neck, you squeeze in with your fingers and where you want a belly, you would relax that pressure or push down in this case. Um, and just play around with, there's so many different types of shapes of knobs that you can make. Um, and it's really fun to investigate those forms and see how it transforms your pot. Okay, and lastly, I talked about putting some texture in the bottom of this. You can use um, the bottom of any kind of round tool that you have, um, a round brush. I have this little tool with wooden balls on the end, just whatever you find. I wet the tool so that it doesn't stick to the clay. And then I'm just kind of working around and spinning it. Um, 
And the, the idea here, I think, is that the underneath part of the bread will bake and not get soggy bottom, as they say on the Great British Baking Show. Um, we'll see if it works. I've seen cloches that have some like grid patterns and texture worked in. Um, so this is just a texture that I'm going with. Um, yeah, have fun making it and I can't wait to hear about your delicious bread that you bake.